Greetings, English class. It's me. Now, you probably remember me as that, right? Yeah. I'm not that right now. I'm sick and dying. So imagine, imagine uh, uh, Smeagol, Gollum, whatever. I'm very not healthy. Anyway, we're going to be talking about Jack London's To Build a Fire. It's a classic, older than everybody who's watching this video. Great time. So, first of all, we're going to go over some of the themes that tie into the story, like naturalism. Mm. Now, naturalism is the literary movement that emphasizes observation and the scientific method in the fictional portrayal of reality. Basically, basically, it started out as a type of realism, meaning that, because at the time, fiction was all, like, kind of fluffy and stupid, and these people were like, well, I'm tired of things being fluffy and stupid, let's make it more real. And they said, well, what about, isn't nature kind of like the end-all, be-all? And all these authors are like, yeah, it is. And that's where we are now. The bad thing is, according to Wikipedia, mind you, that uh, it's a paradox, naturalism, is that, you know, human behavior is a result of free will, but it's also kind of determined by natural laws, which I don't want to go into a whole lot. All right, all right, I'll get to the story in a sec. I'm just dropping some more prereqs. The story was originally published in 1902, but Jack thought it was completely stupid. So he republished it in 1908, a different like version. version. And now that 1908 version is the version everybody remembers. And the 1908 version is considered a naturalist piece because it is a primary and pretty good example of man versus nature. Now, I bet you're asking why he'd rewrite the story. I'll explain that later. It takes place in the Yukon Territory, or rather... Sarah Palin land, a.k.a. not Canada or Russia, <coughs> Alaska. <laughs> it takes place in Alaska. Anyway. All right, folks. It's story time. At 9 o'clock on an extremely cold winter morning in the Yukon Territory, negative 75 degrees Fahrenheit. It's freaking cold. A man heads out for the Yukon Trail, and all the natives say, Nuh-uh, you're going to die. And he's like, whatever, and continues to go into the icy wilderness. He thinks he's got it under control. You know, he's got a biscuit and decent self-esteem. He seems like a nice guy. A large pupper decides to accompany our unlikely hero. The pupper is a husky. <laughs> That's so cute. Our hero is supposedly meeting a group of miners in Henderson Creek around like 6 o'clock. The pupper keeps saying, hey, let's go back, fam. We're like, going to die and stuff. But the dude don't speak animals very well. The Bear Grylls wannabe continues into the wild. But uh-oh, his mouth done been frozen shut. He was chewing Tabasco. I mean tobacco. Our hero decides to... He then starts a fire to thaw out his depression. He continues on his journey and falls through the ice. Our boy here ain't no Coca-Cola bear, so he's pissed. He's really cold, but he's more angry than cold. So he decides to build a fire. <laughs> He's fairly successful. Good job, man. The pupper gets a bad feeling about this and starts to bork. And bork. And bork. And the man didn't take pupperies in junior high, so he scoffs at the dog and ignores him. Science time, y'all. You, you, know, you know how, like, heat rises? Well, at this point in the story, which, eh, in which the fire our hero started, melts the snow on the tree above him and puts the fire out. And our hero goes... Oh! That's what the dog was trying to tell me. But don't fret, friends, because he dies. The dog pays his respects. Nah. And goes back to the village. Alright, this is more of the fun facts -y stuff, because I've gotten through everything I want to get through. Basically, this whole story points out innocence to reality, our theme, <coughs> because... The man, our main character, Vincent, as in the 1902 version, Vincent thought that he had everything under control. He had a perceived idea of what the Yukon wilderness was going to be like. But it was shattered by the terrible reality that he was freaking screwed the moment he walked into the Yukon wilderness. He died. He didn't really learn his lesson. He died. So, what made the 1902 version, which I should have mentioned earlier, so different, he didn't die. Jack London spared him. He didn't die. He got frostbit. There was no dog. And a few people warned him. Not everybody warned him in the village. So, slightly different. And that's why the 1902 version isn't as loved by naturalists, because it's not as natural. There isn't this lesson learned that, oh, 
I'm an idiot. I didn't I didn't prepare for this, basically. That's all you need to know, kids. Wink. Hey yo, I'm EP, no TI, but you know we ride, can't deny that we fly, alright I'm 